Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of Tig Time. Hi, I'm Mr. Tig, and today we're in Big Dog Garage, and I've got Bernard Euclid with me. He's got a project here. It looks like some type of an aluminum, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask him to describe it to me, but it looks like it's some type of a repair. It looks like there's several cracks in here. So, uh, Bernard, thanks for having us here. You're quite welcome. My pleasure. Well, what we got here is a, a 1932 Fraser. Uh, it's an overhead cam engine, so this is the cam cover for it. Okay. Uh, it's an aluminum casting, but again, in the early days, the castings were very poor. In fact, when we did the oil pan on this, we had the material analyzed. It's aluminum, but only 72% of it. The rest was other materials, and there was like 2 or 3% that were, they called other materials, which they couldn't identify. So, okay. Which, of course, <laughs> makes it very difficult to weld. Plus, it's been soaked in oil for the last, what, 80 years. Okay, so it's likely we're going to have some contamination when we weld. You know, I, I've had this stuff where you, you start hitting it with a torch and it lights up like a little oil fire. Okay. So. Okay, well, I think what we're going to do in this particular project, it looks like it's pretty heavy duty. I mean, was that normal back then? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's fairly thick. It's not, you know, because they had difficulties with casting stuff where they had a core shift or something. So they made it fairly heavy. Okay, um, now right right now it visually looks like it's fairly clean or oil free. Well, we had it in in the ultrasonic cleaner for probably a half hour. Okay. And um, and I'm sure as soon as we start heating it, you'll see oil coming out of it. Okay. Well, I think I think what we're going to do with this project uh, and uh, like he had mentioned, you don't know how bad it is until you start welding on it. So. Uh, I'm going to do a little prepping on here. I'll get in there with a little ball grinder and get rid of some of the surface uh, yeah. contaminants. And it may take a couple of passes, man, but typically what happens when you have junk material or trash elements in there, uh, they're there. You know, I mean, this is not new material. Uh, I'd like to say that it's going to be easy to weld. Probably is not, but I'm going to show you a few techniques that are going to help you in, in your endeavors, especially yeah. oil, oil uh, doused for 80 years. When I w tried to weld the oil pan, uh, it spit back like it had cadmium in it. Okay. You know, and it's just, it's weird stuff. Okay. Well, we're going to use every technique possible to make this weld, so uh, so stay tuned. I'm going to put my gear on, uh, go through the welding procedure on this, and then uh, when I finish, I'm going to have Bernard come back and, and uh, give me an evaluation to see if we passed or failed on it. Does, does that sound good? <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay, and, and welding aluminum, uh, trying to chase a crack sometimes is almost impossible. So what I try to do, so I don't create a lot of shrinkage, is I actually route this out no more than 50% of the wall thickness. Now, I don't use a standard bit. I use one that's designed for removing soft metals. And you can see that the, uh, uh, the aggressiveness of this wheel, it won't load up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld this shut. And then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to back grind doing exactly the same thing. Now, one of the big differences is if you notice my tungsten, that is not a green tungsten, believe it or not. Uh, that is what we call laser tungsten. And it's kind of a, a lime type color or Seattle Seahawks color. Uh, it's designed for all machines now, AC and DC inverters or transformer machines. So I'm going to use that it's 332 diameter. I've got to kick up the amperage to about 185 amps and that's about the maximum. Maybe uh, all the way up to about 200 amps before this uh, this tungsten will start breaking down. So let me get my gear on and I'm going to make this weld first. Okay, well this has been oil soaked for over 80 years, so I'm going to let the machine try to clean it out as best as it can. Um, it, it's trying to clean up. You can see I just, uh, I'm sitting here, I'm dwelling, oscillating a little bit, letting it preheat, letting all the crud boil out. And, you know, this is probably going to be a two-pass operation, which is absolutely fine. And I'm using 4043. Uh, it seems to be welding 
fairly nicely. You can see some of the oil boiling off here in smoke. But, um, you know, overall, adding this filler material, it seems to be helping cleaning up. Now, as you get to the top here, it's all accumulating. A lot of crud and corruption coming to the top. But uh, take it real slow, real slow. And again, I'm going to have to do a double pass. Now, as I re-solidify, I just want to make sure I leave a little extra filler there so it doesn't try to crack on me. Okay, well I'm going to come up on the uh, critical surface and that'll have to be refiled or remachined. You, you can probably refile it and get pretty darn accurate. But I never want a crack to get started, so I want to make sure that I have plenty of filler. And you can see that the crud does come to the surface here. things boiling out of it. But again, I'm adding filler. It seems to be cleaning it up considerably. You know, and I'll put a little oscillation in there. Okay, I've turned the part over, and as you can see, uh, visually, now I can see the crack is a through crack. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come through here and prep it with a little grind and uh, put a little V-groove channel in there. Then I'm going to weld it using 4043 filler material, 1 16th diameter. And uh, so far, it's welding up pretty good, but uh, definitely have to get the oxides off there prior to welding. Do you normally start at the end of the crack? rather than, let's say, at, at the spot where it heats up easier? What, what I'll do is, I mean, visually, visually what, what I try to do is, I'll, I know that I could see this yeah. to this point, but I'm gonna grind to about this point. Right. And so I'm gonna start in parent material okay. and move towards an overlap. Okay. Yeah, once I do that, because if I go the other way, the one thing I don't want to do is I don't want stress to make this start running. Start running. You know, so, and that's what you have to be worried about. Yeah. I, I never like to grind Bend all the way. That. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I never like to go all the way through because when it shrinks, it just pulls too much. Too, too much, yeah. You know, and, that's, uh, and it, that just happens. You only have so much elongation, and when you reach that, it'll crack. So this will be, like I say, no more than 50%. The, you know, the grind on it. Right. And then I'll, I'll use that technique on all these. Yeah. Okay, oh, I can hear some movement going on with this material. So I'm doing a little bit of a preheat, so I sit there and dwell a little bit. This really is old, old material. Uh, it does seem to be welding fairly decent. And the only concern I'm going to have is when this material cools off, will it crack? That really is the goal. I'm coming up over the edge here. This is a critical area. So I'm going to do a little double pass here. Action. 
Okay, now this particular weld is probably one of the most critical on, uh, there's about four or five repairs on here. But what's important is we're trying to maintain the flatness here. Uh, so I only ground so much, I went 50% from one side, about 25% from the other. Uh, as I welded, I could see all kinds of crud and corruption coming out. But what you'll probably notice is I started up here in the parent material and I moved towards the flange. Now when I got to the end of the flange here, I added a little extra filler material and I kind of reinforced this rib right here. Now, do I typically have to preheat these materials? And, and the answer is no, you really don't have to preheat. You want to make sure you take off the shock of just ambient air. And I do that because uh, when I start welding, I sit and I dwell there for probably five to 10 seconds and I let heat build up, heat build up before I ever start creating a puddle and, and then do my weld. So we're gonna sit here, we're gonna let this cool off and hopefully we don't have hot short cracking. And the only way you're gonna find that out is to let this part cool down. So uh, we'll get back with you in a few minutes. How are we doing with my pro problem child here? Well, Bernard, this, this thing welded up absolutely horribly. I and, expected this much. <laughs> and, 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 and when I say that, it, you're right. It was doused in oil for 80 years. So right. we had to use some special techniques. And, you know, so we, we ground down, ran a weld. Sometimes it wouldn't weld, so we had to re-clean it, weld again. And as we welded layers, it cleaned up. Okay. So... Did you get any little oil fires coming up? I did. Okay. I did. I got, they just, no matter what you do, I mean, you put this in ultrasonic cleaning, we could have put it in an oven and baked it forever. It just gets impregnated. Yeah. You're, you're, you're spot on. But actually, in some of these areas, like this one right here. This uh, looks really nice. I like this. This looks nice and it, clean. It did. It welded up clean. It didn't have a lot of oil contamination. And this surface right here, which is very critical to your, your needs, it, it turned out that it was almost perfectly flat after welding. You know, we've, we filed it down, checked it, and it was a main concern, and I, I just don't see any gap whatsoever. Yeah, so because if it's, if it's not flat and you tighten this bolt, it's just going to go forward. It's going to snap again. Yeah. yeah. But we, we, can, we can dress that up a little bit on the, on the mill. So we, we had some areas that welded dirty, and uh, they just didn't clean up completely, but they did weld. Uh, so I, I think in, unless we have any leaks, uh, after we clean this up, we'll take a look. Uh, and then if, if we need to do some final touch-ups, we will. Okay. So Bernard? You, you don't think we're going to have a problem with what's, especially on this piece when we dress it up, porosity? I, if we do, it'll be surface, okay. yeah, and then I'll be able to touch it up and then we'll polish it again. So, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll be here for a few days, so it'd be a good idea to get this polished while yeah. we're working on the next project. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, well, uh, Bernard, Thanks for uh, joining me on Take Time. Well, thank thank you for doing this for us. It's, uh, it's something I dreaded having to do, so this worked out perfect. <laughs> Good deal. And thank you for watching Take Time. I'm Mr. Tig. First of all, you got to have gray hair to do this properly. Isn't that correct? That is correct. These young punks watching this video. <laughs> I defy <laughs> any of them. <laughs> The weld is good at this guy. You, you, put, you have to put the challenge up. Well, I got, I, I got to tell you, I have a cheater lens in there. You got the cheater lens. So, <laughs> and look, and you got the PlayStation helmet. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. How long has it been since he's been with a girl that looked like that? Huh? I ask you that. But when you're a welder, those are the kind of women you meet. That's right. <laughs>